Hi there, welcome to uh, the show. So I'm just setting up my sound, doing my sound check, making sure everything is working correctly, giving people time to get into the room. And uh, once that's all clear and, and working well, then we will continue. For those of you who haven't watched my live streams before, look down in the description, you will find uh, the start time for this video if you're not watching the live stream and you wanna watch the replay. So there's, uh, that's, that'll give you the start time because I always post it. Uh, if you have any questions and feedback, you can ask your questions. We're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons while I continue making the Colossal Earth Elemental. And I have quite a few materials here today. I've, uh, I'm starting early because I expect I will not be able to stop. Once I start applying clay, it's not like I can just stop in the middle of that and then, um, you know, come back to it later. Um, clay's a little bit odd in that you really kind of, you've got to apply most of the um, bulk straight away. And you can't stop. And of course, I've got to contend with drying, so things are going to dry out as well. All right, so let us get started. Hi, welcome to How to D and D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today we are going to make a colossal earth elemental. We started making one out of tin foil and hot glue, and uh, I believe a wooden moth ball. So we've done that part first. Now it's time to start applying clay to our our miniature, which isn't really much of a miniature, it's quite large now, it's, it's colossal size. And we also used like a, a cake base as well for its construction. All the materials and equipment that I've been using are down in the description if you are interested. So we are going to get started. I, um, I pulled together only a couple of items that I think I'm going to be needing today. And uh, those items are pretty basic stuff. So it's not the complete list. The list in the description gives you everything I've used from the very first video. Uh, but the things we're going to use today are pretty basic. In that, um, I only need a few items to make this work. And as we are, when, while I'm doing this, you are welcome to ask questions, talk about Dungeons and Dragons with me. I'm happy to do that. And what as well, I've got time to kill. I'm not going to be playing any royalty free music because I just don't see any point. Okay, so this is our miniature. And hopefully the uh, <laughs> hopefully the live stream is reasonably good. I know they're doing work around my place. Okay, so this is our structure, and we're going to build on this. And um, this is essentially all tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil on a cake base and some hot glue. So that's what we're going to be working on. I've got myself some Reno Art white air drying clay. Now this is pretty fragile stuff, but it's cheap. And you can buy it in large quantities, so this is what I'm going to use. I've actually got two of these. I expect I'm going to need quite a lot, so I bought two. Um, New Zealand, it's like $7.90. I believe you can buy something equivalent uh, on, on the internet. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I will put a link in the description so you can find out what it is. I'm also going to be using my Citadel sculpting tools, but mostly my hands are going to be useful today. And uh, there are probably only a couple of tools in here that I'm going to use. I'm going to stick with, see if I can just stick with the metal tools, but you never know. I've also got myself a container of water because I'm going to have to wet down the clay as I'm going, otherwise it's all going to dry up and that could cause a few problems. So container of water and a cloth for drying my hands off and for just cleaning up spills. So. I've done enough talking, let's get on with it. Uh, so where was the one that I was using before? I bought that one today, let's undo this. This is all sealed up with um, sellotape, and for obvious reasons, you don't want it to go off. All right, if I can get it clear. I actually um, took the sellotape off and then re-put it on, realizing that I was probably gonna have to take it off later. Uh, just for the sake of making sure it doesn't go off, because it's it's just a push on lid, nothing else. Let's use some scissors uh, or a knife. Let's use a knife. Let's see if I can just slice through there and whip that little bugger, bugger off. So the the strategy for today is to apply it in layers. So I'm going to take my clay out, ball it up, flatten it down, and apply it in places. And I'm probably going to form it into sausages. You guys have seen me use this technique before. Now, you form a sausage, flatten it, form a ball, flatten it down. Uh, okay. 
And um, yeah, by all means, you're you're welcome to ask questions, chat about Dungeons and Dragons, whether you're a player or a dungeon master. All those things are perfectly fine with me because there's plenty of time. Um, all right, so that's that done. Finally, let us get on with this. All right, so what I've done is I've expanded my screen a little bit because I knew what would happen is you just wouldn't be able to see what was going on. So I'm going to start at the base, grab my clay. As I said, I'm going to ball it up, roll it, flatten it as much as I can because I can build up over, over time. And I'm just going to start pressing it in. And I want a bit of overlap onto the base. Okay, I actually want it to sort of be built into the base so it's reasonably secure. And also to indicate that the, the creature is coming out of the ground. I think that's one of the elements of uh, this miniature that I think is important. Is giving you the impression that it is actually coming out of the ground. So into balls and apply. And as you can see, it's going to take me a little while. Um... Last night I was playing or running a game for my players and uh, we've been using a lot of the adventures you can find in a book called Prepared, which I've done a review on, and The Book of Lairs. Now both by Cabold Press and I'm finding them really, really helpful. Uh, they're short adventures, it's like one page per adventure for the Prepared, sometimes two pages, but it's usually about one or two. It's really quick. Um, they're actually pretty good adventures. I, I, I'm actually really impressed with the quality. And they're full of monsters from the Monster Manual, but also from the Tome of Beasts, which is also produced by Cabold Press. And I've done a review on that. I did a review on Prepared and, um, and a Book of Lairs. And I highly recommend these books. So little time to prepare. Decent adventures. Really unusual. My players have been enjoying the, the, the change from you know, using the pre-made uh, Wizards of the Coast adventures, which are like big, huge books that are like 25, what, 250 pages, 260 pages, uh, with multiple elements, highly complicated, which is all very well, but sometimes you just want to, you just want a little adventure. And, um, and they link, you can link them together, we've linked them together, and they're, they're working out fine. Um, I haven't had a big protagonist show up yet, but that's mainly because they've managed to eliminate anybody who, <laughs> who they thought might become a main protagonist. So that, that's one of the elements of um, uh, running the game, right, is you, you can't always have all of your villains survive uh, the first encounter or even the second encounter. So... Hence, there hasn't been a protagonist that sticks out for them just yet. Um, or a villain. A villain of some kind. But we'll get there. It's only, they're only level 5, so there's time. And for those of you who are wondering why I'm not playing any music, that's, look, I would be royalty-free music, I just don't see the point. You're better off if you don't want to listen to me, just to play your own music. Personally, that's what my feeling is. And I'm just going to try and it's in between the legs is going to be my biggest hassle I suspect just in terms of getting the clay in and separating the legs I, although there won't be a lot of separation because I didn't I didn't build them out far enough to, to do that I'm not worried about that because I'm actually going to build the legs out on the outside more just need to get the, the first part done and this stuff works pretty well you know the thing about clay is just use your fingers and you can just brush out any seams that you've created pretty quickly as you can see but you do have to work quick if you don't work quick it's all going to dry on you which is why I've brought along with me some uh, some water and getting my finger in the middle there it's going to be a little bit tricky I wonder if I can get my tool in there the tool in there will that help the problem with the tool is it sort of leaves marks as well I don't think I need to worry too much about it I guess though What are you going to see down there? I can I can put something over the top of that. Uh, did I need to cut my fingernails? Oh, I can see fingernails marks everywhere. No, they're not too long, but they are showing up. Okay, that's all right. We'll work them out. We'll just rub them out. Rub them out. Here we go. And just keep applying. So yeah, um, the Tome of Beasts, 
I don't know if you guys have got know much about the Tome of Beasts, but what I'm finding with the Tome of Beasts, which is what I really like, is that this these adventures, um, there's lots of uh, ideas in the stat blocks for the monsters for the Tome of Beasts, and you can create your own adventure just from that that fluff. I've, I'm finding, and not only that, the monsters just don't remove hit points. You know, it's, it's not like a slog and let's just take out the hit points and once the hit points are all gone, the thing dies. Um, or it just trucks out damage in the form of hit points. Usually when something strikes, these monsters also require saving throws of some kind as they impart some sort of condition or create some other unique, interesting effect. And that's what I really like about those monsters. And they're really scary. They're, they're certainly... A lot more powerful than one, what you'd find in the, the Dungeons and Dragons 5e Monster Manual, um, which I feel is a little bit tame at times. And I, I would prefer my monsters, since my players have been at the game for almost four years, uh, I really want them to be uh, finding things a bit harder rather than okay, yep, we've got a we've got a zombie here or we've got a dragon here, we can keep and um, deal with that, not a problem. I think one of the um, things that I thought was really interesting was the. It was, the fla it was a flame dragon. Uh, and this flame dragon, uh, it doesn't matter if you've got resistance to fire. The barbarian was shocked to find that the fire that was being produced from this um, dragon was going straight through their resistance, which is actually stipulated in the in the stat block for that monster. And I thought that, he, he was like, really? And I said, yeah, really? Yeah, it's it's in the stat block, it's there, this thing. You, you, your resistance won't work. It goes straight through. It's a special magical fire. And he was like, uh, okay. How much damage do I take? Like, oh, it's only, it's only 50, 56. <laughs> 56 hit points. And now we're all the constitution saving throw. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. But yeah, it's been fun. And they faced a really odd monster uh, yesterday, uh, which was like a fey had uh, two, three claws, some sort of strange stinger on its head. It looked more like an alien, uh, and it was uh, housed inside some armor made of obsidian, shaped like a minotaur. And it was, uh, it was a really fun fight. I actually really enjoyed it, and so did they, which is great. Mixing it up, making it interesting. Yeah. All right, so we're getting there. As you can see, building up the layers and so forth is not that difficult, and all I am is just pressing this stuff on. Remember, it's an earth elemental, it doesn't have to be uh, perfectly proportioned or anything like that. Anybody could do something like this, not just the likes of me, you know, you don't have to be on YouTube or have uh, a degree or skills in art. All you're doing is slapping on a bit of clay, and you can shape things around later if you're really interested. And uh, get rid of all my f my finger marks, my fingernail marks. That's the that's going to be the biggest issue. Is the fingernail marks. Horat. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys are watching and you find there any problems with the quality of the video or the sound, please let me know. I really would be interested to know. I'm always a little worried that uh, with the the renovations that are taking place on the internet in my area. That things will um, sort of uh, drop in quality and I don't really want that to happen um, not that I've got much control over it I've just got to wait it out but yeah it is still good to know if there are problems and there we go right oh it's coming along nicely the trick is going to be making sure I build out in the right direction. Easy peasies. It's like going back to school when the, um, the school teacher said here, uh, school teacher said, yeah, here's some clay, make this. Make something like this. And uh, you just go go to town. I, I don't know if you guys ever did that when you were at school, but that's what I remember. I remember getting handed some clay and saying, here, go and make something. <laughs> Hi Aaron, how's it going? It's Fred, early stream. Yes, it is. It's I'm, I'm streaming early because if I started at 12, I just don't feel like I would have got through the whole whole project and I'm working with air drying clay and 
once you start with air drying clay, you really just, you can't stop. Uh, you've just got to keep just bashing through it until it's done. So I'm, that's why I'm doing it earlier, to make sure I do get it all done. So yes, I'm probably going to be here a long time, and, and I know I've been trying really hard to keep my streams to like an hour, hour and a half with the, uh, the miniature stuff, but this one is potentially likely to be a little bit longer than that. I've also got a doctor's appointment that I have to go to, so I'm going to make sure I don't um, run over time. If I run over time, I'll be in trouble. And the doctor's appointment is obviously very important, so yes. Um, one of the things that I have been toying with, and I, I only ran it past somebody as a, an off comment, but I was wondering how you guys would feel if I brought somebody else in on my channel. You know, one person running a channel, doing as much content as I do, is very, very hard. And obviously the channel doesn't make enough money to, to make it a full-time job. It's, it's not possible. But uh, I do have a brother who's um, very much into art and monsters and fantasy and stuff like that to a certain degree and making movies. So he's got a lot of skills. And I was, I was thinking of maybe getting him to come in and do a lot of the editing work that I just don't have time to do. Um, and also maybe even open it up to him uh, doing some some sculpting videos himself, live stream, uh, or even some drawing videos. I know he's very good at drawing. But i um, a little, little worried that suddenly if I start uh, allowing that to happen that you guys will think that I'm not taking a, a big part in the channel. Um, my contribution will probably say stay the same. It would just mean that the live stream videos would get cut down. Uh, so there'd be a live stream full blown version and then he would cut down uh, that version and take out all of the, the sort of the other bits and pieces that is, you know, the setup time and the sound checks and any sort of uh, comments at the end of the actual presentation would be re removed. So you'd have to watch the full blown stream to make that sort of, uh, to get that information. Just to shorten things down, make things a bit more condensed. I know people like short. Uh, yeah, it is. It is my channel, but I'm also aware that uh, sometimes, sometimes you know, input from other people in terms of what they were expecting. I don't want the channel to sort of die or um, suffer a hiccup because I've decided to make it uh, a change that people don't like the idea of. But I just, the more and more I look at how. Uh, content is delivered on YouTube. It's all set up for big channels, for big networks, for big teams of people, and you, you just can't do it alone. You, you do have to have help, uh, particularly if you want things to, to progress. Um, people who are trying to do it on their own are sort of stuck in the, in the hole of doing one video every week, which YouTube isn't very fond of, and also uh, they, they need, there's a big steep learning curve and I, and I, I feel like uh, my brother would would uh, add a lot to the channel he would benefit I would benefit and you guys might benefit too so um, yeah I just thought I'd throw that out there as a comment and see what people said because this is the sort of thing that he does really well whereas me I'm a, I'm an amateur in comparison to my brother in terms of when it comes to art Sculpture, anything like that. Complete amateur. He's the one with the art degree, not me. Okay, all right, so. And we'll grab this. What's this? What's that, Aaron? Well, I am selective of what content I watch. Uh, like, I may not watch um, you sculpt a creature. Um, I don't want... I don't want, but I like to watch your DM tips. Yeah, see, that's one of the things I know about my channel, is that although I've got 4,500 subscribers, people don't come to my channel for the same sort of things, because it's very broad. Um, so I totally understand that, Aaron. Makes perfect sense. Which is why the, the views on my, uh, my channel tend to be reasonably low, because people are looking for the content that uh, they, they want, and they're waiting for that... And I do everything in blocks, right? 
So it could be anywhere from a couple of weeks before they start seeing a, a series of videos that are for the DM or a series of videos that are for the players or something like that. So I totally understand that. And I know there's a few people hanging out waiting for painting videos. So I haven't done any painting, but the weather is, um, is such that I will probably start going and doing some miniature painting very shortly because the weather will allow it. Uh, Aaron, okay, what do you got here? Uh, I'm sure anyone in your channel could see it's see oh it's Fred content yeah I will watch the video yeah yeah fair enough makes sense <coughs> anyway let us continue with the Earth Elemental which I feel like is coming along reasonably well certainly I've got um, I've got a fair amount on. We've got 20 minutes in and I've managed to get the legs, part of the body sort of covered. Um, still got to build up some bulk on it, but it's all right. I've got time. This is the reason why I started early. And we just keep blending it in. Like so. And Aaron, thank you for commenting. I always feel really weird when uh, I do a live stream and everybody's quiet. Uh, I totally understand if you don't want to be sort of part of the chat, it's your choice. But yes, it's always nice when I get feedback. And um, I don't think I've ever been a complete um, ask to anybody on, uh, on live stream. So uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. Right. There we go. <clears throat> oh, what's that, Aaron? Um, what kind of stats you think you would give this critter? Low AC because it's hard to uh, hit or high because thick skin? Um, well, I'm pretty sure I saw a stat block that Wizards of the Coast put out called Ogre March and it's I'm pretty sure Ogre March is in Princes of the Apocalypse now I don't like the adventure but I thought the addition of that particular stat block I've always wanted to run that I thought that would be the stat block for the monster that I'm creating here I thought that would be the best option um, maybe I'll pull out the stats and show it and we'll, we'll discuss it sometime but that's what I was thinking of. I was actually building it based on the concept of using that stat block. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it necessarily needs to have a low AC because it's made out of earth and stone, so it, it could potentially have quite a high AC. Uh, but it won't be because of dexterity. It'll be because of it's just... It's, it's stone, you know? Its own natural armor is... Uh, stopping you from being able to smash it. It's like trying to strike a a sword or an axe into a piece of stone. All you're going to do is blunt in the, the axe, the sword. You know, you, you, can, you probably might do better if you had a, a mining pick, and that'd be about it. Um, a sledgehammer might be fine. A sledgehammer's pretty good at uh, breaking up stone, but if you've ever used a um, a sledgehammer to break stone. It's not like it's not like you're smashing off huge pieces because you just don't. Uh, if anything, it's a long process. You know, you've got to get um, cold chisel in there and find cracks and chip off bits and pieces, little bit by little bit. So it's a it's a stone is actually a hard thing to break down, which is why it makes sense that um, Earth Elemental would have resistance to non-magical weapons that do certain types of damage like piercing and slashing and bludgeoning although I, th I feel like bludgeoning wouldn't be quite so bad all right cool so that's that's coming along nicely and we keep working our way through here making my balls flattening them down and then inserting them where i think they should go and the reason I'm starting at the base is this is going to give me strength as I go. It's going to get heavier at the top as I build it up. And uh, it's important to make sure that the base section is as strong as possible. 
also too, some of the tin foil is, feels a little bit loose and I'm hoping that the clay will harden that all up. Um, the problem with air dry clay is that you can't just make a big huge solid mass, it doesn't work very well. What tends to happen is it just doesn't dry at all. It's important to have sort of like a, a layer over something or hollow and hollow is just going to be a pain so I'm not doing hollow. Instead, I am layering it over the tin foil, and and it is metal. You just scrunch it up, and it, it, it's it's reasonably strong, and it's reasonably light too. The clay won't be light. The clay's like heavy as. And press that in. La -da -do, do -do -de -de. I've been trying to convince my brother to uh, to do a book of art on monsters. Uh, just just draw a whole lot of really cool monsters. And I haven't managed to sell him on that idea. He's, he's got caught up in other projects. But um, I'm hoping that one day he will. Then I can have my second monster manual back. And, uh, and try and repair it. <laughs> okay, uh, what's that Aaron? The clay isn't the normal green stuff. No, it's not. Um, how is this diff um, different? And do you think it will cause a problem with painting or drying and cracking? It's entirely possible it can crack, but that's why I'm using a thin layer. And also too, why I'm... Uh, the problem is if you make it thick, your, your clay, if you, thick, you layer it on thick, it will crack. It just, it has to has to get rid of the moisture somehow. So the, the trick is to make sure the drying is slow and not too fast. I'm in New Zealand so there's a lot of moisture in the air so things tend to dry a lot slower here. If you were in a hot country it would, it would be a bit different. But you can get around that problem by putting it in a location where it will dry a lot slower. You know, a damp environment um, that'll help. And then, you know, as the moisture comes out of the clay, it dries and you'll, you'll avoid that, that cracking problem. Um, in terms of painting it, the surface really needs to be sanded. I've always found that uh, you do have to sand it. But there, is, there are products you can put over air drying clay to make it uh, not so much of a problem. So you, you can get around that. Uh, the humidity here in New Zealand is generally at least 80% or higher. So in, in summer, uh, sometimes uh, in summer, uh, particularly in winter and spring, 90% um, to 95% humidity. So there's a lot of moisture in the air. Because we have so much rain, it was the, the air just holds all the moisture. Um, so yes, it can get very, very humid. Even on a cold day, there's a lot of moisture in the air. Dehumidifiers are sort of a common thing to try and use here, but of course it's expensive. And um, power in New Zealand is horribly expensive, so you really got to be wealthy if you can afford to do that. And of course it would be an ongoing process. You'd have to do it literally every day to get the moisture out of the air because it, it replenishes itself so quickly. So yes. It's not quite tropical, and but... Um, it, I would say semi-tropical in nature and I don't mean like heat in summer it's it's it doesn't get that hot it might be get it as hot as 35 would be a, a hot day that's Celsius but the air humidity would be 95 percent wouldn't be quite a hundred percent but it'd be very 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 high and that's that can be rough on your system You're trying to uh, get around and breathe and so forth a lot of moisture in the air. Right, oh, I'm feeling better about this. We're uh, we're near the top of the little. <clears throat> well, he's not little, is he? He's he's a lot bigger. We're at the top of the monster now, building onto the shoulders. And that isn't too bad. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just make sure that it's not drying out. Seems to be all right. Need a drink of water. I'm definitely drying out, so hence why I need to drink the water. Alright, so keep grabbing some clay.
and bang on some more. Um, so for those of you who are wondering what sort of videos are coming in the future, I believe we have a couple more Barbarian videos and then after that we're going to be back to, uh, I've got some spell videos that I've been sitting in the works, they have, I think there's about four videos that I have edited that are sitting on, on the system waiting for me to do the metadata. Uh, but we're going to move to DM videos, uh, Monster Tactics seems to be a very popular topic so we'll go back to doing that. And I'm trying to... I'm trying to come up with another DM uh, video for, I believe somebody asked me a question regarding uh, reactions and how they work and what what the story is. And I feel like that's actually quite a complicated process. It can be very confusing, so I'm, I'm going to avoid uh, jumping into that topic too soon, but I'm going to work on that as well to make sure that you've got... Uh, a good explanation about how they work, when they are used, and, 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 and how they interact with everything else. Okay, uh, so Aaron, how are you going to texture the surface? Well, uh, texture the surface. Right now, I'm not worrying too much about texturing the surface. I, I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm just going to press something into it. You know, I was going to just press anything that I thought I might be able to make an imprint on it. So this, the cloth there, is just making an imprint. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see exactly what's going on, but there's an imprint, so it's imperfect, so it's not smooth. But even if it was smooth, it wouldn't matter. You know, you can you can change things around, you can stick things on. Um, all of that is sort of an option. But texturing it with anything. I would think that probably the easiest way to texture this, to give the basic texture, is just get a cloth and just press it in while it's still soft. So let's, uh, let's turn this little sucker around, start working on the front section. Yeah, there we go. Start building them up. Blah da 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 da. I, um, I really enjoy these videos because I don't really, it's not, it's not super stressful usually. Apart from maybe some of the things that I've made that have been a bit smaller or I've really had a struggle trying to figure out. But uh, you know, really quite relaxing to just sort of sit here, chat along and uh, just make something. I miss making stuff. I miss teaching people how to make stuff. Uh, which is what my job used to be and it's not now which is sort of a bit sucky but oh well. Things change and... Uh, who knows, I might be able to get back into teaching full time again and get out of retail. I feel so sorry for people who work in retail. If you work in retail, you, you deserve a gold medal. It's rough. It's really, really rough. And horribly boring. <laughs> I find it horribly boring. Okay. Alright. Blend that little sucker in. Great thing about your finger, eh? Just all I've had to do so far, I have used my tools very, very little, hardly at all. Most of this has just been with fingers. The real trick is going to be doing the arms and seeing if the weight of the clay um, can be supported by my tinfoil structure. Uh, that'll be the, the real test, I think. And blend in. So, all right, let's turn it around a bit. There we go. Cool. Next. I haven't used that much clay either. I haven't had to go anywhere near the uh, the second tub, but um, we'll see. <clears throat> you don't want to make it too thin, so don't get carried away with uh, worrying about it being too thick by making it too thin, because you'll have the same problem occur. If it's too thin, it, it can crack and break off. So, I would say you're looking at about 5mm of thickness at the minimum, which is a, what, 5mm would be, if you go and use Imperial, it's somewhere in the vicinity of one, is it one fifth of an inch? Is that right? One fifth of an inch? Something like that. Okay. What's that, Aaron? Would, would like one on spending 
um, key key points. Oh, one I'm spending key points. Yeah, I'm going to do the the monk. I'm just not going to do it straight away. Sorcery points. I think I did a video on sorcery points, but I may not have entitled it as sorcery points, which is probably what I need to do. I need to turn it and call it sorcery points. Or do you mean just spending sorcery points? I'm pretty sure I did one on sorcery and sorcery points. In fact, I'm absolutely sure because I did the, the sorcerer. Uh, can you use flurry of blows after you use the fangs of the fire snake? That's a good question. Now, now that is a good question. I don't know the answer to that. It'll take me some research. For those of you who wonder when I do my live streams and my videos, it's not like it's not like I'm an expert and I memorize every single rule. I do a lot of research before I present anything to make sure I'm getting it right. So, yeah, remember I've always said I'm just a guy who runs a YouTube channel, just like any other person. Um, play Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, yeah, I'm just running a YouTube channel, trying to do content that other people aren't doing, rather than the same old thing. Uh, which is fine, they do well, the same old thing, but yeah, it would be nice to be able to cover all the bases. All the bases, get everything covered. So yes, Aaron, uh, sounds like a topic I need to discuss, and it will happen, but I believe the next series of videos for the player after I've done monster tactics for the DM are going to be more likely in the, in the vicinity of the paladin. I'm probably going to cover the paladin before I go near the monk. Uh, now I know that sounds strange because I love monks but uh, it's I guess it's more about uh, finding artwork sometimes. It's about me trying to find artwork that's suitable. Uh, also to what I think people want to know about the most and I've had a lot of questions about the paladin so hence hence why I've been focusing on that I did the barbarian because somebody asked me a question about the barbarian a while back but it was regarding the Xanathar's Guide to Everything uh, book and I haven't really had a time to sort of sit down with John and come up with material to cover that question but I will but I thought well I'll do the barbarian basics for it first there we go I don't know if you can see what I'm doing if I've I know I've turned it around so I can see what's going on and the camera sort of on the side of me so if I if you can't see I do apologize I'll turn it around so you can see it's just I've better get I've got to get my fingers in there <laughs> if I can't get my fingers in there I can't do it and you can't really position the, the, the camera right right where my, I am if, if the camera's there, then I can't get at anything, so, <laughs> which is why I'm always off to the side a little bit. So, yes, alright, so key points, sorcery points. Check out that video on sorcery points that I've already done for the sorcerer, Aaron, and if it doesn't cover the details, then put it in the comments and let me know that I need to do something else as well. I'm fine with that, I'll be quite happy to go back to the sorcerer and talk again a little bit more. Um, the, uh, the cast is always very complicated, which is, I think, probably why I decided to do, I started doing the rogue and the fighter, and because I was thinking, oh, well, that's simple, and then I realized my mistake, that I should just go straight to the really hard one, so I did wizard, warlock, sorcerer, and then I've gone back to sort of barbarian, and the only reason I haven't started tackling the cleric and the uh, bard is one I don't know enough about the bard I'd have to do a lot more research and the cleric um, it's not so much that I don't know much about the cleric I do actually my, my biggest issue is more in terms of I was trying to find artwork that would be useful in the presentation and I just couldn't find enough of it quickly enough and uh, but it will come certainly it will come and we'll go through all of the basic classes at some point and then we'll start dealing with some of the other other features there's so much information in those books it's like dealing with a textbook really it's like going back to school and I, I know for some people that complexity is very very easy but it's not easy for everybody 
And um, I've got some friends who are quite happy for Dungeons and Dragons to remain a um, a pastime for, for for geeks and nerds, and they they identify themselves as such. And I'm like, yeah, but my my mentality about Dungeons and Dragons is I want everybody to play as many people as possible. I don't care who you are, um, and how how smart you think you are. How's it going, Eric? Hi there. Um, so yes, I've always been of the attitude that, um, if there are people who are struggling to play the game, then I want them to know how to play, which is the whole me mentality of, and why I started the channel in the first place, is, uh, getting as many people playing the game as possible and to help those people who, who are already playing or want to start playing the game. All right. Okay. So we're getting there. So it looks a little odd, I do realize this. It looks very, very strange, and I haven't sort of explained to you what I'm doing. I'm just trying to cover everything right now. Um, laugh out loud. Me and Aaron are becoming regulars. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Aaron, Aaron has, um, has kept me busy. Otherwise, otherwise, I'd be talking to myself. It's very depressing when that happens. Very depressing. Okay, let us continue on. Alright, so I'm going to just finish putting this clay on and then I'm going to put a bit of water over the whole thing just to keep it soft. One of the problems is the clay will dry out even in the humidity of New Zealand. So, and we don't want that happening too soon otherwise it will start setting and I won't be able to apply anything else. So, water on my fingertips and all you do is just rub everything as quickly in between like so here we go all right uh what's that um uh jeffizo jeffizo if i got uh, if i got your your name wrong you're gonna correct me okay because i'm terrible with names absolutely awful uh, arms is too long I don't like it yeah I know I know the arms are very very long um, I, I wanted the arms to be long because I just like the idea of having really long arms so so I don't have players saying oh I can't reach that far <laughs> so, and, and I'm probably going to be adding a lot of bulk to it anyway so it will compensate for the arms looking quite long but you know, when you make your own, you don't have to make them as long as this. You can make them a lot shorter. But I like the idea of having long arms on my, my monster. Uh, that way they can't they can't say, nah, it can't reach me, Fred. Look, look. Proportionately it's it's not able to. Oh dear. Alright, Eric's having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer it uh, bulk, bulk it bulk it beef 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 the dude up yeah yeah buff dude you want a buff dude I don't know I think I, f I feel like it's it's uh, it's less about uh, turning it into Arnold Schwarzenegger and more about turning it into a monster that's made out of earth <laughs> but but I get what you're talking about all right now it's at uh, Defizo every little Aluminium foil magic, every little bit just turns me on. Ah, <laughs> oh dear, you're a cracker. Ah, oh dear. <laughs> uh, what's that, Eric? I was thinking about the crystal you can grow with water for uh, the rocky look. Yeah, yep, yeah, you could. You absolutely could. It's a pretty good idea. Obviously, Defizo agrees with you too, so that's that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's uh, let's bulk up the arms, and this is this is where it's going to get interesting because if as soon as the bulk starts going on the arms, the arms might sag, and that's the only thing I'm a little worried about. Okay. So I'll turn this round because you can't see a thing I'm doing, can you? <laughs> I feel like I'm working backwards. Mm. 
Now you guys can see and I can't. Ah, this is gonna be really weird. Okay, here we go. All right, that's the, that's the beginning. Okay, let it in. let's pad on a bit more here. So every once in a while when you're putting your clay on, make sure you wet it down again so that you, your clay stays soft and you can keep working with it. And that. I'll tell you what, Jafizo, I'm going to make sure that the Earth Elemental has a chiseled chin. I'm going to give it a chiseled chin so at least it looks, uh, I don't know, manly in some way. How's that sound? Is that a... Um, a decent uh, compromise. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Defizo, that's a good idea. Is the uh, putty over mostly foil-like uh, skin? Yeah, it's it's. There's tin foil underneath, and basically the putty is just to help me sculpt and shape it. Um, I suppose if you had a, a, a truckload of glue guns, you could just coat it with glue. Uh, once you've got your basic shape created with your tin foil, but I felt like the clay was a better idea. Um, time will tell if I am correct. Uh, Eric, um, I was laughing when you said that it wasn't for Aaron, you'd be talking to yourself. Yes, that's, but it's true. It's true. I would have been talking to myself. I am an artist. I don't judge people's perception, perceptum, like percept, perceptives. Per perspectives of create creativity. Sorry, man, I'm looking in one direction, looking in another direction. Um, yeah, well, that's fair enough. Thank you very much. A chiseled chin. All right, we'll make sure it has a chiseled chin. In fact, I'm going to put this last little bit of clay that I've got working with on the arm, and I'm going to I'm going to chisel the chin up right now before I continue with the arms, and hopefully that will satisfy you. We'll make, it, uh, we'll make it a chiseled chin. I mean, I think it should have a chiseled chin myself, really. I think it's, I think that would be a, a good idea. It's made of earth, so it could be any, I mean, any shape it likes. It's just got to have, like, basically some sort of arms and legs, right? And a head. Some eyes, and we're in. We're in. It's... it's <laughs> uh, all right. Turn that round so you can actually see what I'm doing. Sorry guys, I do apologize. I keep forgetting that you're not the only one here. I'm not the only one here. I'm not the only one here. Yeah, I'm not alone. There are people watching. Uh, there we go. Um, I'm also still tossing up, and it really comes down to time. I really wanted to finish the Horde of the Dragon Queen uh, guides, DM guides, uh, and then do the other ones as well. But I'm still tossing up whether I should do them or not. I, I, just, I know that people still run that adventure, and they would still like guidance on it. And since I've run it, it does make sense to actually do some videos on that. But they're so time consuming in terms of notes, I need to have a lot of time to sit down and put that all together. And also too, those videos are really long, so I think most of them have been at least half an hour and I've been talking flat out the whole time. So those are the sorts of videos where I really need to take a lot of time to prep them. And my schedule is so tight with the one video every day. I spend my time in my lunch break. For those of you who are wondering, when do I have time to write my notes? I do it, I get to work early because I have a clock in and a clock out uh, system. And if I don't clock in and on time, they, they dock me money. So I, I show up early, I start writing my notes, and I pull out my books and I start looking at things, reading stuff, and doing a little bit of research. And then at lunchtime, I eat my food. I spend about 15 minutes doing the same sort of thing. As I'm driving back, because it takes me about an hour to drive back and forth from work. Um, I'll be thinking about uh, what I need to prepare. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm sort of also th trying to figure out where I need to go to get more information, because often um, I can't come up with every single little idea just from my brain, my experience, 
and from the books and so I'll have to go and check out Sage Advice or I'll have to check um, the forums, stuff like that just to see what the, the current sort of questions that people are asking, see if they've been resolved um, and then I might jump on the internet for a very short period of time, so often like only 5-10 minutes just to make sure everything is lining up which is why my video content is, is supposed to be really short because uh, even with the short ones, it's there's a lot of prepping. Once I've done all that, I'm I'm then breaking it down, making sure, and I'm trying to keep my notes to like two pages. You'd be surprised how difficult that is to do. So that's my process. And then of course, when I do my live stream, I, I have like five minute prep. I um, present. It takes me anywhere from what well, usually it's about ten minutes through to maybe twenty minutes, sometimes fifteen. Uh, then I just walk away, come back when the YouTube's finished processing it, do all the metadata, and then prep and ready the next live stream, and then of course notify you that it's going to take place. So that's my process, my con my creative process for this channel. And because it's like that, and I'm doing a 40-hour job, there's really no room for long, complicated videos. Not right now. Um, which is why I'm contemplating getting somebody else on board to help me. Uh, even though I wouldn't be able to pay them. So I've got to convince somebody that, one, uh, working really, really hard for pretty much nothing is worth it. That's the only hassle. All right, let's do the chisel chin. Thank you very much. I'm not the best. Like I said, I'm just some an average person, man. Just, just play Dungeons and Dragons and run a YouTube channel. That's all it is. My, my friends who are dungeon masters and players, they, they, they laugh quite a lot when I do a video and they'll watch them and they'll see the responses people have. And um, most of the content that I put out, they're like, well, Fred, yeah, I know you said this, but like, doesn't everybody get that? And I, it's not like you just said anything that was super, <laughs> super knowledgeable or required a, a, you know, a video on it. Sometimes they're just like, mm, okay, yeah, all right. So, to give you an idea, I am the least smartest individual in the group of friends that uh, I hang out with and probably know the least amount about the game than the rest of them do. And I'm serious, it's true. Okay. I just rewatched what's that? I just rewatched the D and D starter workshop again today. Um, great instructional refresher. Thank you. All right, great. Is that the one on the Lost Mine of Fandelver, or is it um, is it just one of the reviews on the on the starter set? Because uh, I've been f thinking I should um, break that down and do something a little bit more involved. I really wanted to. Um, it's just the time factor and also how can I add additional value to you guys by redoing it you know there's no point redoing something unless I'm adding additional value otherwise it's like just rehashing um, and of course we're all prone to rehashing somebody's stuff at some point uh, but it would be nice to sort of come up with something that's a little bit more useful to you that wasn't already spoken about Surprisingly, that particular um, video on the Lost Mine of Fandelver is one of my most popular videos. Apart from the one on Does Toothpaste Remove Permanent Marker from a Chessex Vinyl Battle Mat? Which I do not understand in the slightest. Um, okay. Jafazo, is that sufficient in terms of a chiseled chin? Do you feel, do you feel that's a better, a better look? It's not quite so Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a little bit lopsided, but that's kind of deliberate on my part. Uh, Eric, um, I I check out the Mystic People from yesterday yesterday's show. They're going to love. Oh, you're going to love those trees. They are awesome. Yeah, I got the email. Um, I'm actually quite excited, and I am definitely if if they do send it to me, which I, I have no, I'm sure they will. Um, I'm I'm definitely going to showcase them on uh, on the channel. Probably as a live stream, probably not as a, a pre-recorded video, they just take too long. Um, but uh, yeah, I can do live stream, that's not a problem. I'm always, 
it's actually quite uh, quite hard to come up with content that doesn't require a lot of prep so showcasing a product is is nice and easy it's really easy uh, Jafazo fine fine I'll help you sheesh twist my arm why don't you <laughs> like, thank you very much yeah help me help me uh, dear. you know when you make your own earth elemental Jafazo you can make it however you like it doesn't have to have big long arms or anything like that you do it whatever way you like nobody can stop you because it's you know <laughs> there's no no law saying you have to make it a particular way all right I'm just gonna just I feel like I feel like that is weird that is really weird okay stop fiddling with it Fred just get on with it get the clay on get the clay on what time is it it's almost 12 o'clock I'm so glad I started early <laughs> I'd still be here oh dear I'd still be here after after two o'clock or something stupid like that anyway oh and um, the video that I did on group checks yesterday uh, the only reason it hasn't been uploaded YouTube has processed it but I was running my game yesterday so I needed to go and get that sorted out so that's it'll get done it should should wind up getting released uh, for people to watch and check out sometime today after I've finished doing this and after my doctor's appointment so yes if you were wondering when that was coming out you might have seen it ad, you know uh, a reminder advertising that it was going to be running and I ran it and yes it will get released so you will get a chance to see what I what I talked about in terms of the group check and I was looking on uh, YouTube and I noticed that there was very very little on the concept of the group check so I think you will find it useful to you since nobody said very much about them now, in fact the only one I think that made a, a decent attempt at talking about group checks but really it wasn't enough was Nerdarchy um, and of course everybody knows about Nerdarchy because they are one of the top Dungeons and Dragons channels and they produce vast quantities of uh, content and between uh, well, Dave's, uh, Dave's commentary and, and stuff is uh, incredibly amusing um, funny guy uh, and, and he's uh, he's essentially running the channel now my understanding he does most of the, the hard lifting although I'm sure they've got some people who help as well but he does it what streams like it every day just about it it seems like it anyway all right uh, all right what's that um, Jefazo mine would look um, look as good as a, a bald up lump of clay <laughs> I don't think it would actually I honestly don't think it would uh, it, it's not going it honestly is not that hard you just make two legs two arms one has just got a balled up fist well it's just a ball really and a couple of fingers and that was just a head that I glued on once I'd covered it in tinfoil there's nothing to it easy peasy stuff and what's that Aaron uh, Fred some more of my styrofoam builder um, build builds and attempted a oh, oh you did a circular wizard tower uh, had removable floors don't work uh, didn't work out and I'm going to try again with square tower okay hey put that up on Facebook um, for those of you who don't know I do have a Facebook group called how to D&D you can join the group and uh, I post images there so do other people you can check out stuff there Aaron put that up there man um, even the even the failure if you um, you might feel it's a failure but it's still it's still cool it will show people how not to do it you know I have honestly I've had some videos where people have uh, spent like half an hour or an hour only to realize well actually that didn't work out that's how not to do it <laughs> so I'd still be interested in seeing it so yeah before you throw it all away um, take a take some photos or shoot a little bit of um, video on Facebook and plant it up there uh, what's that Aaron uh, Matt Mercer uses group checks on critical role every once in a while but your explanation was spot on yeah uh, look it's it's really about finding the right time and the right reason for doing that uh, that group check and um, 
my players last night, predictably, I knew it was going to happen, it always does, is they, somebody will say, up, oh, I'm going to make an insight check, and everybody pulled out their dice, <laughs> and I was like, and I was sitting there, and I was like, mm-hmm, okay, I see where they're going with this, but I didn't say anything, I didn't stop them rolling the dice, because, you know, some sometimes DMs are the issue in terms of insisting on rolling a dice for everything when you don't need to, and sometimes it's the players, and I just let them roll their dice, and I said, okay, uh, none of you know this particular um, NPC monster well enough that you could determine any of that. And somebody had rolled like a 26 on the insight. And I said, so yeah, you guys pulling out your dice and rolling it wasn't really sort of necessary. I didn't stop them doing it um, because I knew that they wanted to roll it. I don't know what it is, you know. As soon as we start playing the game of Dungeons and Dragons, everybody wants to start rolling dice. And they figure that, uh, you know, a 30... I've tried to explain it to my players, but it never, it never sort of seems to sink in. So, so if, if you thought that I had everything fixed and I didn't run into this problem any, um, myself on a regular basis, I can tell you now that my players, even though they've been playing with me for ages, will still try it on. You know, there's no way they could possibly fathom something and they'll all pull out the dice to try and determine something. Knowledge checks was another one. I think they came up across a monster which they could not possibly know anything about. It wouldn't matter what they rolled for their arcana check or their intelligence check. This was a monster that was so unusual and so rare that they could not possibly know anything about it. And he insisted in rolling a dice. I said, okay, fine, roll a dice. And I, and I said to him, it's a tiny strange creature with three uh, claws and wings with what looks like a stinger on top. It's the most bizarre thing you've ever, ever seen, and you just can't think back to anything that's even remotely like it. Um, yes. But it was, you know, when it comes to something that they've come across, like, a, you know, earth elementals or water elementals, I think the water elemental, when they asked to do a knowledge check on that, that was a bit different. You know, I felt like, well, that's something that uh, they probably read about. He was a sage, so he would have known a lot about that sort of stuff, I'd imagine, too. He's playing a wizard. But uh, the, the other monster I pulled out of the uh, Tome of Beasts, it was so bizarre. When I showed it to my players, they'd be like, What the heck is that? What is that? I've never seen anything like it. It's really disgusting. It looks really alien. And I said, Yeah, yeah well, I know it does, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, and I think they pummeled their way through the um, the creature's armor, destroyed that, only to find the creature inside was even tougher than the uh, armor, which I thought was quite amusing, and they they uh, they couldn't quite comprehend. But um, yeah, made for an interesting battle. Unfortunately, it's one of those creatures that really they can't communicate with because it is so odd and strange and alien. So yeah, having a conversation, but the battle didn't start straight away. It was it was only when they did something that um, appeared to uh, to somebody to be aggressive. As soon as they moved forwards, that was that was the uh, the trigger, and um, and things started to proceed. If they'd just stayed at the back and tried to sort of communicate at a distance and hadn't moved forward, it probably would have turned out slightly differently. All right. Now, one of the things I really like about Matt Mercer is you've, he's, um, he's adjusted. You know, some of the times I feel really bad. You know, it's, it's, it's tough when you're online and um, everything is checked, double-checked and discussed. Uh, you know, all of his, you know, any time he made, made a mistake with the, uh, the rules, he had to contend with people telling him how it should be and, uh, you know, it's not like playing in your lounge and your privacy of your home where you can just do stuff and when you make a mistake it doesn't matter and you move on. You're, you're scrutinized by 50,000 people who are watching this live stream all at once. And then of course when people start re-watching it there's 100 or 200,000 people who are all, you know, commenting and, uh, and saying okay that should have been done that way. So, yes, it can be a bit rough, I think.
but I like the way his players have sort of adapted. When he says, "Look, no, it's not going to work that way," they are they are they are immediately, you know, he's trained them well, and they're probably very good friends, and that always also helps. They immediately say, "Yep, yeah, okay, that's fine." Yep, yeah. they they don't they don't sort of argue the points or anything like that. They're just happy to just keep going. I think it's a good trait. It's a good trait to have. Okay, all right. Uh, I just need another drink of water. I'm getting dry. All right, what's that, Aaron? Um, Aaron's got here. I like how in Tomb of Annihilation module, they allow you to meet Volo and purchase in the game Volo's Guide to Monsters. Does it? I haven't actually checked that. I think that's awesome. I think that's fantastic. Now that should open up and make it a lot easier to determine and understand monsters that are in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Now, that makes a lot of sense. Um, well, allow the characters to purchase it so they can re reference it. Yeah, I think that's actually quite nice. That's, that's, I think that's awesome. I know that occasionally I've had players come across books in my game that are, you know, maybe a book on particular types of monsters, it might be constructs, or it might be fey, or it might be demons, or devils, or, you know, monstrosities, dragons, things like that, and of course I've given them um, a lot more information, because they can use that book as a reference when they're making a knowledge check, so yeah, that can be very helpful, so you don't always have to just dish out um, spell books and spell scrolls, you know. It's one of the, the nice things about finding a book of lore, is it might be useful in some way. And it doesn't have to be immediately useful in the adventure you're running, it might be later on down the track when I've had um, players who come back, you know, six months later they've picked up this book and said, hey this book that I picked up on this, can, do I get an advantage on my roll or do I know a lot more because I have this book? And I say, no, you don't have to roll, you know, you, you can just look it up in the book and you'll find the information you need. Uh, that's a good feature. I think it's a good idea. Da -da -da -da. All right, here we go. Oh, we're getting busy in here. I'm glad. That's good. It means I am not alone. And there's lots of discussion, which is awesome. Um, what else have we got here? Alright, so what Aaron you got here says if they buy it they can learn resistances and special abilities for creatures. Well that's a cool, yeah, Eric. Uh, they probably all DM'd before so have a, a better feeling for Matt's, um, yeah, subtle hints. Yeah, well they have all sort of, have every, has everybody had a chance to DM? I don't know, I, I know that um, Liam has, I know uh, Marisha's done it. But have all of them DM'd before? I don't know an awful lot about it. I just don't have time to track their activities uh, in great detail anymore. But that that could well be it. Yeah. Certainly possible if they've all DM'd before, they'll have a an idea. Eric, I think the guy, Sam, from Critical Role is a very dynamic player. Yeah, Sam, Sam is, um, he's all about the fun. No matter whether it's going to result in success or failure. But you, one of the things I notice about Sam and how he plays in the game is that although he'll do things that will, will mess the party up and cause problems and complications, he's also the first person when things really hit the, the, um, the fan to get them out of it as well. He'll do something that, uh, particularly when he was playing... Oh... Who was he playing? He was playing the, the Bard or whatever it was. Um, and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the character. But uh, he would get them out of out of the, out of of trouble, out of poo. Even though he may have created some problems as well. So, And you could see on his face as a player that he felt a little bit guilty for causing the problem in the first place. But um, yeah, it still made the, the game very interesting for them and also to watch. <clears throat> okay, um, Aaron at Eric R. No, they all started playing at Matt's house because uh, one wanted to play for his birthday. That was Liam. Yep, 
Most had never played before. Uh, they played for a year and was asked to take it online for a deck and sundry. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that... Um, oh, Travis ran a one-shot? Yeah, Geek and Sundry. Yeah, Eric, I didn't realise that Travis ran a one-shot. I must have missed that. So, Travis has. Um, I don't know if Sam's run a game. Sam Regal. Oh, yes, yeah, Scanlon. That's right. That's the one. Scanlon. How could I possibly forget that name, right? Well, it's easy. <laughs> I did. Um, but really, let's let's get real. The the real character is not um, the characters he he plays. It's Sam himself. Just the introductions in those videos is highly amusing, particularly when they're doing the advertising. I think I think um, Sam's tongue in cheek um, approach and uh, the degree. You don't know if he's mocking mocking the um, the sponsors or whether he's actually trying to support them sometimes. Some of the things that he's done. But he also he always tries to make it more interesting and entertaining to get through it, I suspect. Because every week it's like that first five minutes is now we have to talk about our sponsors and all the other things that are funding our, our videos and uh, the huge uh, studio that's running. So, got to do it. It's all part and parcel of it. And if it means you don't have to um, pay a fee to watch them, um, then so be it. It was always the case with TV originally, right? You had to um, you had to deal with the ads to get to the the content you really wanted. Harat. Um, Eric, hey, yeah, that's an awesome story. Yes. Um, he did one as Grog, did he? I didn't realise that, um, Eric. I have no idea. I'll have to chase down Travis's, uh, his, uh, his DMing, see what it was like. I can believe, I can believe you, I can believe that he, he would do an awesome job. Um, Travis, you can tell when he's playing the game, he's all about the fun. And uh, he gets bored very quickly. Uh, I've noticed that he's... Uh, He's actually, he's actually uh, uh, become less sort of um, uh, short with, um, with Bailey, um, his wife. So, which, is, which is interesting. Uh, and, and I think it's mainly because um, she's, she's, she's really been playing up um, the character that she's, she's in. And doing things that are very, very funny, very entertaining. So I have watched some of the new season, just not all of it. Alright. Okay, I'm going to have to start putting some, uh, some more water over this because I can feel it starting to dry up on me. But um, we will get back to that in a second. I'll just get this fixed on first. Alright. Okay, so... That's that. Let's get my fingers wet again and just make sure it doesn't dry out on me. Oh, it's going to be, I've got so much to clean up after this. It'll be wet clay residue everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Laura. Yeah. Oh, Laura and Ashley ran a one shot. I did not realize that. Thanks, uh, thanks, Aaron. Now I know. Uh, no. Hi, Joseph. How's it going? Nice to have you. To have you nice. Yes. All right. We are just making sure... Oh, my fingernails are getting covered in clay. I have... I'm going to have uh, clay up in the fingernails. I'm going to have to trim them back and give them a good wash. La 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 la. Hopefully the monster's not getting the wrong idea as I rub my hands all over them. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Wet them up. There we go. Man, I haven't had to work with clay in such a long time. It's kind of nice. Kinda. 
There we go. All right. No, all but Ashley and Laura. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I didn't know. I'm just taking your word for it. I don't know too much about um, who's been running one shots and who hasn't. Uh, what's that, Eric? Uh, has not the brave is very fun, even though failures he plays it out. Yeah, not as not has been an awesome character. It's been really fun to watch him play that character. Uh, a female goblin in a party. What could possibly go wrong? Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> as it happens, quite a lot. How are you guys doing with um, Marvel's Affinity Wars? My my friends are all going potty right now for uh, the new movie, and um, talking about going and seeing it, and there's a bit of bit of hype going on. I feel like. I feel like the Marvel movies are, it's, it's weird, you know, they've, they've done really, really well, and they keep doing well, but it's hard to sort of place what's, what's working for them. It's going to be interesting to see a whole new generation of characters re um, being replaced by somebody else, you know? Because obviously there's going to be some, some deaths. And um, it also sort of begs the question, is Marvel going to do what they've done in their comic books and have characters who have died that used to be around come back to life? Because, you know, I used to that, that used to really annoy me when they'd kill off a, a superhero and then they'd bring them back years later. I uh, really don't want that. Um, I don't mind it in my Dungeons & Dragons games. But I never really liked it in the comic books, so I'm a little bit worried they might try to do that with uh, the movies. Right. Uh, Aaron, I was going to say something about uh, watching where you were um, touching him earlier when you were sculpting, but... Touching his butt. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, I... With the connotations, uh, we've got to be careful nowadays. Um, it's alright, I've made the comment. And for anybody who's watching this and thinking that I'm 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 taking the, the Mickey out of anybody, I'm just mucking around, man. It's nothing serious at all. There we go. Oh, right. And Sif man, what's this? Um Eric. I'm a superhero head. I, I can't wait to see uh, see it. Do you have um, comic book characters where you're from? Yeah, we do. Look, just because um, Marvel and DC are, you know, they're American products. They're produced in America. They're published in America and, and all that sort of thing. Don't think that the rest of the world hasn't been following these characters. Whether they're Marvel or DC. I used to... I was I was into both of them. I don't care, you know. Superman, the Flash, um, Thor, the Justice League, all that sort of stuff. I was always into that. I always had trouble reading, and my mum, what she would do to help me um, read, is she went out and she bought. This is back in the day when they're all black and white, and you couldn't really get um, color uh, comic books. You could buy them for like 50 cents in New Zealand or 20 cents. It was very, very cheap. And she'd just buy up a whole lot and dump them in front of me and say, okay, there you go. And of course, I'd, I learnt to read by reading the, the dialogue in the comic books because of course, I didn't know what was being said. So I'd go over it, you watch, look at the pictures and then you'd have to try to figure it out. So it started off with her sort of reading out bits to me. And then of course... Um, I picked it up a lot faster because I was interested. So yeah, learning to read through comic books. So yes, we absolutely do. Um, Superman and Justice League. Are we are we referring to Superman's um, top lip? 
Oh, that was awful, wasn't it? I, I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't fathom what was going on until my brother said, yeah, he had a moustache and he wouldn't shave it off because he had a movie. And instead of just um, getting a stick-on moustache so they didn't have to take it out, I was like, you serious? He wasn't going to shave the moustache off for the Justice League because he was doing this other movie. So why didn't they just have him, since he's been like sitting there for, for ages, you know, and suspended animation or partial death or whatever the heck it is, why didn't they just have him in the movie with a moustache and be done with it? Made perfect sense. No, none of the CGI, the CGI moustache from removal was awful. God, it was horrible. Yes. Not, not a fan of that. Still, I'm really pleased that Wonder Woman has done so well. And, um... Never would have guessed it. I, you know, I, I've had a dim view of... Of, uh movie makers and anybody's treatment of uh, superheroes that were women. They always seem to underplay them or do silly things with them that weren't necessary, you know, to make them like second best to uh, their male counterparts, which I just really dislike. But um, she's a hard hitter and she's portrayed as a hard hitter and I think that was a great move on their part. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the next one. In fact, it's um, out of the DC Universe, I think, the Wonder Woman movie. And I honestly, I, I did enjoy uh, the first Man of Steel, even though it was, you know, a little bit depressing at times. I did, I did enjoy the first Man of Steel. I did not enjoy uh, Batman and Superman, or Batman versus Superman. I thought that was really weird. And there's a lot, lot of reasons why. It didn't make sense, um, and it felt a bit rushed at times, and th there's a lot missing from the movie that probably should have been there, and there's loose um, story, story links that are probably getting picked up at a later date, but you've got to make sure the story you're making, whether that's you know for a movie or for your own adventure, that you, you keep on the main the main storyline. Focus on the main storyline, don't get carried away with too many side issues. Otherwise you detract from the, the story itself. Alright, okay, so... Um, resurrected. Yes, yes, being resurrected. One of those things is being resurrected is um, it's tricky to do it in a Dungeons and Dragons game without P and some people having issues with it. Uh, I don't think there's actually too much of an issue because there's a spell that's all about resurrecting down characters. In fact, there's a couple. And I'm sure you know about them. Raise Dead and Reincarnate, one of my favourites because you don't know what you're going to get. Um, not so much a player favourite, I would imagine. It's probably more a DM favourite. And then and then uh, the more powerful spells. Um, Revivify... It's pretty good too, although that's you know you've got to get in there pretty quick to make that work. Eric, I meant on the other Marvel and DC. Um, I was wondering if there were Euro publications. Well, I'm not in Europe. I've, I'm honestly not too sure about what the story is in Europe. I'm in Oceania, so um, the bottom, the the bottom of the world, the the, the butt end of it, uh, right down the bottom where Australia is. And no, New Zealand is not a state of Australia for anybody who was thinking that it was. It's <laughs> it's its own its own country at this present time. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to do some things here because I really want to sort of press in and get myself a basic shape of my fist so okay I feel like that's sort of roughly got it and I'm gonna see if I can clean off this this tool I wasn't entirely sure how I was gonna do the eyes um, in fact I'm still not entirely sure how I'm gonna do the eyes but I am going to put a nose on this thing 
And I'm going to start building a face into it. And that can go like so. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm on the side, I know it's on, I've realized it's on the side and so it's a bit hard for you to see what I'm doing, but I need to also be able to get at it. I'll turn it around so you can see. All right, that's the nose, eyes. All right, okay, I'm gonna turn it away for a second so I can get a better, better shot at it and then I'll turn it back and you can see what's going on. All right, it's, it's like I'm turning around, doing my thing, coming back around, it's, it's not quite right on that side. The eye looks a little odd. Um, close enough and then the mouth there we go and then get this little tool in there finish it okay <clears throat> so there's the basic Head going on. Okay. Hopefully it looks reasonable. I'm hoping it does. Okay, so <clears throat> standing up and I'm gonna get my knuckles in here. So I only got three fingers, so There we go. I'll get back to the chat in a second, guys. I haven't forgotten about it yet. <clears throat> and if that's... Oh, let's just turn this over a little bit. Okay, all right, <clears throat> that part of it's mostly sorted. Okay, so what have I missed? I've probably missed heaps. <clears throat> heaps and heaps, what have, I, what, have I, what have I missed here? I'll just refresh and make sure I've got it all up to date. La da 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 dee, okay. Um, Eric, I am happy to see women getting more roles as heroes. I just don't like the fact that they have to become like men to uh, to be accepted as equals. I agree. Women can be empowered still being women. Yes, I agree. I, uh, I do get what you're talking about. Um, the, uh, the development of Star Wars and the, is it the Rey character that they've got? I have no issue with Ray whatsoever. No issue whatsoever with that character at all. My my issue with that particular part of it is um, it's it's almost as if Ray requires no training whatsoever to be good at something. And I think that's come up a few times. But she also seems to be sort of um, slightly 
what is it, emancipated. She, she's got this the feeling of being um, very butch. Um, so that, yeah, she does feel more like a guy than a girl. Um, which I don't know that it was actually necessary to do, but in the, I think they've, they've sort of done that deliberately. Um, <clears throat> I think the biggest issues I've seen with the, the new Star Wars is that uh, the one thing that we were all looking for in terms of a story arc was the reunite, reuniting Han, Leah, and Luke. And we never got that scene. And Han dying at his son's hands made perfect sense. Um, for anybody who hasn't watched those movies, I do apologize. I've just spoiled everything for you. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, that was um, that was a blunder on my part. So yeah, I'm talking about Star Wars and Marvel and but you know these are the sorts of stories we tend to tend to deal with nowadays, right? You know, pop culture and these are sorts of stories that we we will include and probably incorporate into our Dungeons and Dragons stories to a large extent. You know, the the stories that we are seeing coming out are. Um, revamps of existing stories they really are you know the, the tomb of annihilation is simply um, the tomb of horrors they've just changed it a little bit you know uh, Chris Perkins has tried to create his own tomb of horrors that's even more deadly and even better and so forth than what Gary created but um, yeah, I feel like the a lot of the things that we were looking for and a lot of the stories that were coming out, we just didn't get. And I think that's what Marvel has done well. They have managed to produce the stories that people were hoping for. They got Civil War. Um, it might not have turned out quite the same as the comic book, but then nothing does. Um, but yeah, we're seeing the progression and the things that uh, people were hoping to see. And that's, you know... Even the actors, when um, when they were doing Star Wars, were hoping to get back together in a scene, and that never happened. The only time we see anybody together is Han and Leia at the very end, and uh, I didn't buy it. Why would Leia let Han go off on his own to face bloodthirsty son on his own? I feel like both of them should have gone. That's just me. Alright, okay, so I'm falling behind the chat here, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Eric, okay, when I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say, okay, okay, what I'm trying to say is, does Australia have their own version of Superman, Batman, Captain America? No, no they don't. No, um, the only thing, we've, they've got personalities, but see, I don't, I don't think there's there's no real comic book as such. We're just not big enough for too small a country to have that sort of publication going on. Foot Rot Flats is what we get in New Zealand. Um, Foot Rot Flats is a farmer who has a cat, um, a dog, and uh, Foot Rot Flats is most, mostly about the story of this this um, farm dog who gets into trouble, and um, that's that's sort of essentially. What the story is all about you know and, it, and it's a lot of kiwi culture tied in but the, in terms of comic book that's really about the extent of it in terms of a famous and it's not a superhero it's just everyday sort of stuff it's just a, a comic book that's funny it was always designed to be funny and amusing <clears throat> and as for australia well yeah i don't think there's much there um, Aaron, I like the Tomb of Annihilation has a, a death curse where the resurrection spells don't work. Yeah, that's cool. And those uh, that had been re resurrected before slowly die, losing one hit point every day until they are all dead or at zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was cool. Um, at Eric R, like a New Zealand original superhero. No, no, we don't. Um, yes. So we've covered that. Good. All right. I did talk about it. Sorry, it took me a little while to get to there. So while we're talking about story, and we are talking about story, and obviously Marvel's been doing it well, let's start talking about Star Wars. Because when it comes to Star Wars and storytelling, I mean, who doesn't know these stories? 
These are the stories that so many of us have loved, going right back to the very first movie, A New Hope. And, um, and now we're looking at you know, a movie every six months to a year, which, which is obviously to make up for the immense cost of buying the franchise, but is that too much? I feel like it is way, way too much. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned because when they started talking about there being a hand solo movie, how do you make a hand solo movie without Harrison Ford? Let's get real. Harrison Ford is in a league of his own. He always had been. And so how do you make a movie with another actor who tries to play Harrison Ford? There's only a couple of people that I can think of who might even attempt it. And they didn't get the part. So that doesn't make an awful lot of sense. <clears throat> and then, of course, we've got the upcoming Star Wars 9, the continuation of um, the, the you know, trilogy, that, so the new trilogy. And Abraham's supposed to be taking the realm of that. And I'm just wondering what's going to happen there. It's, I don't think there's a lot wrong with the concepts and the stories that they're trying to tell. I just think they, they've chucked too much story into these movies sometimes. And they've, they've, they've not necessarily delivered on the things that they, they could have. And I almost feel like there's been, there was a lot of reuse of older stories from the original movies. Not so much just in Force Awakens, but also... Now, it almost, almost felt like Battlestar Galactica, um, the, the Last Jedi. You know, you, you're being chased through space, uh, pursued by um, a threat, and yes, it's very strange. I've been watching a lot of stuff on YouTube about um, Star Wars and the story progression. Alright. Yo, she's coming along nicely. Just keep adding the clay. Keep adding the clay. And it will get there. Can only get better. Well, that's the hope anyway. Positive attitude. Stick with the positive attitude. Right. Also, too, you can stick stuff onto the clay after. It doesn't have to stay like this. Um, you can actually stick things on to make it look more earthy if you want to. And... Yeah, I feel like... Oh, maybe I need to deal with that little bit down the middle there, that looks a little bit weird. It's starting to dry up down there too. Alright. Oh yeah. Man. This scared the bejesus out of anybody, this thing. Okay. Um, Aaron. I was wondering if you might put on uh, some... Um, some pea grade to give him lumps. Well, yeah, pressing in some 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 bits and pieces into the clay would give him some texture, and you can do that while he's still, you know, wet and and so forth. I've got some some grit around somewhere which I could do do that with. Um, not a lot, but I've got some. So yeah, we can do that. I think what I'll do is I want to coat it, get the basic structure done. And then, once I've done that, then I'm going to start sticking stuff on. I'm just going to make sure I keep him damp so he um, he can be worked with. Alright. Man, I'm so glad I made the arms really long. Um, it's just much more intimidating. Do you know, it kind of... 
I kind of think back to um, what the what was it the, the Spider-Man movie that had the Sandman in it, and I was thinking this is kind of like the Sandman, isn't it? A little bit like that. Maybe maybe their model making was a little bit better than mine, but um, yeah. All right, so I need to get some clay into there. Oh, it's proving to be... I knew that the fingers would be the biggest hassle for me. Um, but anyway... It's, it's, it's working out. It's coming along. Just flatten out some more. And really, I do encourage you to give it a go. You know, these videos are all very well, you know, you hang out, you see what I'm doing, but it, they're no good unless people actually have a go at doing them themselves. I love it. I've seen a few people who have duplicated um, videos and made their own stuff and they've done even better than I have, or, you know, they've done, they've just done something that was a little bit different. And that's really, that's really great. You know, it's really impressive when people actually start sort of, you know, taking what you've done and building on that. Now, uh, what's it, Aaron? I have four books in the works uh, right now, so the superhero book will have to wait until I get these done. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. The, um, the story that I think is most interesting in terms of any kind of story you might have is the, the journey of the traditional hero, which is like traveling into the belly of the beast. And <clears throat> the traditional hero, if you've ever sort of studied anything about it, they have to die. At some point, they have to die. Sometimes they die and come back, but sometimes they die and that's, that's their legacy, is they, they died for a cause. Um, and almost every single traditional hero, rather than the <clears throat> the more modern versions of the, the hero, they, they perish. And it's usually doing something that other people wouldn't do. And that's what made them so important. And, you know, if you can embed that into your Dungeons & Dragons game, <clears throat> all the better. I think that's a great way to go. But, you know, the game itself does not reward players doing that. You've got to have a player who's prepared to stick it out, you know. I'm going to do take this action uh, for the better good of all, even if it means the death of my character and there's no chance of that char character ever coming back. That's one of the more important aspects of the, uh, the hero archetype, the, the traditional hero archetype. And the most famous hero archetype of all is the tragic hero which and now the tragic hero is your Darth Vader and <clears throat> where you know redemption is only only achieved in, in death um, Othello is a good example it's Shakespeare yet another example of where um, somebody who, who had all the virtues of of the hero and only redeems themselves in their death. And um, those are important things to understand. And it might not necessarily be their death, but often it's just their downfall, you know. Uh, it's something that brings them down. <clears throat> okay. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the basic arm structure. And I'm, I'm really wanting to build on some of the areas that look a little bit sort of sparse. And I'm, I'm thinking in the back section is where I'm having the most issues with. Down through here. So um, I'll just mark it so you can see. 
down through here I just feel like that is just not right in some way so we're going to press in and shape it until it sort of gets to be what I want it to be and I'm going to build up a little bit more in the back uh, what's that Aaron um, have two international bestsellers and two not so much oh that's cool Aaron what are your stories about while you're here and we're talking about stories tell us what your um your books are about now I'm not asking this because I, I'm not interested man I'm not I'm, I'm serious tell me I want to know I always wanted to be a writer so uh, it's just it's just really hard what I really wanted to do is I wanted to write children's books but I never I've never really sort of got that far um, and there's only so much you can do with your life sometimes right so this doesn't didn't work out for me and I'm not very good with the English language so it doesn't help either there we go that's uh, filled in those sections All right. Uh, okay, I want a lot more clay. Ugh. Yeah, I. One series is a fantasy, and a heart and hard to explain. There are there are wizards born with powers to manipulate ma manipulate one element. Oh, okay. Well, let's. There's there's. there's it's not it's not doing a book and being successful with it there's that's nothing to um to scoff at man that's that's hard to do in an age where people chew through um books and stories and movies and so forth it's got to be it's got to be tough to be able to um be successful doing something like that okay so for those of you who are wondering what is going on i'm building up the bottom section because i actually want the base of it to be much bigger than it is whether that's a good idea or not I have no idea but I just felt like um, the base section needed to be a lot bigger so it indicates that he's, he's more part of the ground part of the earth um, all right so what else uh, they can put those powers into objects to allow others to perform those abilities but it takes their power to do that and regrows slowly oh interesting yeah What's the name of those books, man? You might not be able to put a link in there, but you can you can let us know what they're called. I, I have so little time to read anything nowadays. Um, it's just just not enough time in the day. All right. So I'm going to apply this and I am then going to wet it down again and we are going to start building on and uh, working towards completion. And I do apologize for anybody who was hoping that this would all be done in an hour or even even on just an hour and a half because it probably won't. I do apologize if you thought that was going to happen. Um, the first one is the Weapon Bearer, the second one is the Rise of the Citadel, and the third is the Leviathan's King. Alright, cool. And a Space Adventure, the Forgotten Clone, alright. Um, the main character gets an inheritance and the power messes with his mind, driving him to attack someone. In a fit of ray and anger, he, his sister finds her power to control flame. Oh, okay. So it's sort of got an element of family sounds like it does anyway all right so let us uh, wet this down again and it is now it's not quite one o'clock here so I've still got still got time before I have to go and see the doctor that's good so we'll get this all covered with moisture and wet it down and then I can start building on some decent um, clay 
So remember, it is important to be careful about how much clay you apply, otherwise it will not dry and it will crack. Uh, and we don't want that to happen. It's important that it doesn't, in fact. Otherwise we've wasted our time. And... All right. La da 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 dee. La da da. Now the I know the fingers look really sort of big and weird, but um, it's a got it's it's essentially a, an earth elemental, so it doesn't have to have structure that's perfectly humanoid. Just needs to have the basic features. That's all right. That's that's my uh, essential belief, right? When I'm doing this. I'm not trying to make it into an actual humanoid figure. That would be too hard. We're making a monster. And it just needs to have the basic features of something like a humanoid. And that's arms, legs, some basic fingers, and a mouth, eyes, nose. Anything additional is probably not going to be um, really important. And I'm not a professional sculptor anyway, so. All right. All right, so there is where we're at. I'm just going to just dry my hands off because that was fun, but sticky. All right, uh, what's this? Aaron, if and if anyone is watching and wants to, to get one, make sure you open Amazon through uh, Fred's affiliate links below. Yeah, 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 that helps support me. <laughs> um, yeah. Jump on. Go through my affiliate link and check out those books of Aaron's. It sounds like a good idea. I like that idea. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, what else? Um, anyhow, the main character vows to protect his sister and escort her to the capital so that she can train and pays for her schooling by joining the military. Uh, okay. Sounds like you've really thought about a lot of this, which is good. I'm, I'm probably never going to get a chance to um, read another book again if I keep doing this YouTube channel. But um, you never know. It's, it's entirely possible. Maybe things will change and I will have more time for that sort of thing. I barely have enough time to prep for my own Dungeons and Dragons games. Alright, so... Now, if you're wondering where are the feet on this, I actually don't want it to have feet. I really want it more to sort of as if it is rising out of the very ground. And so feet are unimportant. Um, also makes it easier because I don't have to deal with quite so much detail. <laughs> hey, I have, I have had said it many times before, I am a lazy dungeon master. Um, I have to take the short route nowadays. It wasn't always the case, but it is now. have to take the, the shortcuts, otherwise there's going to be problems, we'll run out of time. Ugh. Um, yeah, for Aaron, I started playing D&D with my family to improve my storytelling. Oh, okay, I think that's a good idea. I really like it when um, people use get their family involved and their kids are interested, because it's I mean, how much time can you spend with your kids if they're always on the internet and they're always using their phones because I mean that's just the nature of our world now is so much of that going on and reconnecting with them is really really difficult and I still feel like Dungeons and Dragons is a, a better option than trying to play Monopoly you know um, I can't think of a game of Monopoly that I've ever played with anybody that didn't end badly and with bad feelings and people like I'm never playing that game again just because somebody has got to screw everybody else over uh, in that game. Whereas Dungeons and Dragons is not about that. It's about cooperation, working together as a team. And uh, it's fantasy, it's use your imagination. Um, I've come across a few fathers who run their, uh, their kids, their really young kids through, and he explained to me that there's no death, you know, there's no real fighting. It's all very... It's all very 
um, fantasy-like and it's much more innocent in nature because that's all they can really deal with because they're quite young. And, you know, if you started having anything might die, even if it was you know, like the monsters, they, they'll get upset. Uh, so you've got to be careful how you structure that. So, yeah, getting your families involved is absolutely awesome. I'm, a, uh, I'm definitely a supporter of getting your families involved. Of course, if they're not interested, it's best to leave them be. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, let's grab some more clay. Oh. Uh, Aaron, you get a different uh, side of how someone, some people look at characters. Um, I play with three brothers, in-laws, and six nephews. And now with uh, inmates in jail, four nights a week. Yeah, it does. It does change your sort of perspective of how they sort of operate, doesn't it? I agree. I absolutely agree. All right, so the base is, is not so too bad. I feel like that's that's good. Um, the back section, I actually want to build more of the back section up. I'm just going to be careful I don't apply too much clay, otherwise I'm going to mess, mess it up and it will crack for sure. There we go. I can shuffle that around a little bit. Yeah. And I think the, the, the trick of it now is to, to, to actually start building in some imperfection into it. Because if it's too um, perfect, it's going to seem too much like um, a humanoid rather than a monster. Uh, so I'm the back is a little bit odd you can see it's got a bit of a protrusion there I mean I could go down the back and give it sort of like a tailbone but I feel like that's just getting too silly I'm going to build up just in here on that arm and I think it, we're pretty close to doing some texturing and sticking some stuff on this And for those of you who didn't see me doing the, the face on this, it really wasn't that difficult. I just couldn't show you because I needed to get a good sort of angle on it while I was doing it. That's all. Okay. Here we go. Let's just make sure the basic structure is right. And... Gonna just bend the fingers in just a fraction. So that's that's the great thing about clay is you can give you can create slight shifts even with a tin foil. That'll give you the indication that uh, you know there's a bit of shape to it. And that's what I'm doing is I'm just bending it just a fraction. It's actually not very much. But it's enough. And there. That is good. All right. Okay, so I'm I'm not terribly happy with the. Oh, hang on, what's what's wrong inside here? There. That's what I'm not happy with. I'm just, there's just a little bit of a hollow there that I don't like, so I'm going to plonk a bit of clay there. And just work it in. Oh my gosh. It's been a lot of hard work actually been fun there's been a lot of hard work all right I think that's that's more what I was after I don't really want to give him a, um, a big pot belly um, I feel like that's that's essentially what I was after now I need to do some texturing you know in the end this is how much this was um, a kilo of air drying clay I've used about half of that for this project so if you thought you were going to need lots and lots of clay, 
no, it's not necessary. And I've covered it with probably what I would say is more than sufficient to uh, to keep it, give it some strength. So yeah, not too bad. All right, let's just chuck that lid on. I'll seal that up in a second. All right, so next job is texturing. And am I happy with the eyes? Yeah, I think the eyes will be fine. I'll just... Sit down. Okay, all right. Okay, so now moisture again before it dries out. Just rub over the area. Uh, most of the water that I want to put on is in the areas where I'm going to start squeezing and sticking stuff on and also texturing it. Uh, and you don't have to texture the whole thing, but hopefully the, mo the moisture that I'm putting on, the water I'm applying, is gonna help texture that. It dries out pretty quick, even, even if you do have a country with lots of moisture in it anyway. go and turn it a little bit and rub 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 okay all right so there's a reason why I brought the towel with me for those of you who are wondering what the towel was all about it wasn't just so that I could uh, dry my hands off on it there was another reason behind it as well okay how's it going Sam how are you and um, I think all of us are doing reasonably well we're, we're about to uh, texture this monster And uh, yes, hopefully get uh, the rest of it all finished up. I'm just, I know I've got some grit. I put some grit somewhere. Where did I put it though? Ah, I know where to put it. Okay, so I've got this cloth and I could press anything onto it. It really doesn't matter. I don't think it's going to matter an awful lot. You could use any kind of texture you wanted. But all I'm going to do is just press in. And you'll see, as I'm pressing, because it's just been covered in water, that the texture from the cloth is appearing on the surface. If that makes sense. Just go around with the cloth and press. And reasonably firmly, Try not to slide too much, just try to press. And that will get rid of all of the smoothness of the, um, the miniature that you had before. And you could use anything, anything that's sort of got a, a funny surface to it, a funny texture to it, a cloth, just pressing over will give you an imperfect texture to it. Super simple, eh? I saw somebody doing this, I can't remember who it was though, um, I thought it was clever, and I think actually somebody else in the chat mentioned it and I'd, I'd almost forgotten about it too. Uh, Alright. Alright, that's good, let's do the, um, on that side, down there, we'll flip it, we'll turn it around a little bit, and we'll do the same thing on this side. On the head. 
just got to be careful to stay away from the face otherwise it's not going to work very well I'm standing up now guys and the chair is just not going to work all right very good So now is now this is the this is the thing is if I um, if I want to paint this I've got to be careful that I wouldn't sand it uh, and if I do sand it I need got to be careful I don't take all the texture away that I've created. So try to get most of what you've done mm -hmm. done without too many big chunks that you don't want to be there being in the way. Just press on there, turn it a bit. Uh, Aaron at Sam Potts, pretty good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, okay, thanks, uh, Sam. I'm glad you like it. Uh, ah, ball of tin foil. Well, we could use a ball of tin foil. I don't know what that would do. Um, certainly could. I'm just going to use the cloth, I think, for this one. I think that's going to be sufficient rather than a ball of tin foil. It's still got a texture to it. Okay, we're almost there. Here. Ha! Oh, come on, get you around. Get round there, little doggy. Get round there. There we go. All right. So that's uh, that's textured it up, and I had some some grit, which I might stick to this as well. Oh. Okay, so in, in this little container, I'm just going to just um, turn some out so you can see. But what I'm probably not going to do is do it right now because it won't stick. What I'm going to do is I'll coat this with like PVA glue and then I will stick on the grit later. Um, so, but I'll show you what it is. It's just fine gravel that I picked up from a game store. So if you're interested, that's all it is. And be sensible, just go outside, go to the beach, you just pick up your own stuff, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, but that's, see I can press that in, or cover patches of it with this, and uh, yeah, attach it. If you have little stones, you could press it into the miniature as well. Um, and that is probably something I will do at some point. I'm probably not gonna do it today, and I probably will not come back to this video uh, um, topic. I'm not going to do another live stream of the, the Colossal Earth Elemental. When we come back and see the Earth Elemental again, I will probably have already glued this stuff on. And I will be painting it. Um, along with all the other monsters that we've made over the months and so forth. Okay, uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, another guy uses a ball and rolls it over. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Pretty dynamic indent and indentations though. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean we could um, we could do that. I'll do it on the back. If I don't like it, I'll take it off. I just don't really feel like I need to make huge indentations on something like this. Um, I feel like it's it's done probably enough. Um, but let's have a go. Tell me what you think. So this is what we got right now. This is what it looks like. Uh, Sam apparently uses textured foam tiles. Okay. So I could roll that around the back. Like so. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's probably going to be too much. It certainly will texture it. If I was going to do it, I'd probably only do it in one location. Hmm. 
If anything, I might just leave it there and do it in the base section only. Does that make sense? I think that's probably better rather than all over the entire thing. I feel like down the bottom is probably the best place for that rather than anywhere else. Whereas the rest of it can stay because otherwise it's going to be too rough and I'm dealing with clay and if it's too rough it just tends to break off anyway will be hard to work with all right there there it is um, hopefully I've got you guys in a, a decent um, decent position yeah I think I think it's right I think the cloth Ultimately is the best option. I've done um, I've done some I've used the ball of tinfoil on the base. That's that's fine And I'm not too Unhappy with that, but I think the cloth is um, probably better. It's still got uh, just minor indentations over it and uh, It's given me some texture to it uh, Okay, all right, let's have a look um, We are going to finish up there. Hey, thank you for everybody who showed up it is going to be another week before you'll see me doing any kind of crafting. Um, after this video, the following days, you'll see stuff that's either around spells or the Barbarian. I think there's a couple more Barbarian uh, videos to do, live streamed. And then we'll be moving on to Monster Tactics. And I think we're going to be dealing with the Will-O-The-Wisp, uh, Zombies, and some other monster I can't remember the name of. So yeah, that's my intention. So that is where we will finish for today. And um, you guys have a great day. And uh, yeah, tell me, do you like it or do you hate it? And uh, are you going to have a go at making your own? Thank you, Sam. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you think it's awesome. I think it will make an awesome monster when I put it on the table for my players. Uh, Hey Aaron, man, I really enjoyed having hanging out with you. You 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 were great, you know. Um, you kept the conversation going. Otherwise, it sort of like gets really quiet and weird. Um, Sam agreed. Thanks for uh, the entertainment. You're welcome. Um, as always, you'll find that um, uh, this video will get published probably in about an hour or two uh, by YouTube. Uh, if you found this content interesting and helpful in any way, please please share and like the video. And if you like this sort of content, you're probably only going to see like one of these every, what, uh, once a week. But I do DM content, I do player content. Um, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And also the bell button beside the subscribe button because that will notify you when I do a live stream and when I publish a new video. And I do publish videos pretty much every single day or, and often I go live stream as well. Um, on top of that, if you want to support my channel, you supported me by just watching this video. And if you go and watch the, the 500 videos that I have, you don't have to watch all of them, they're not all going to be for you, uh, that'll support me too because I get AdSense revenue. I don't do Patreon, but down in the description, you'll find an affiliate link where you can buy stuff online and I get a small commission, you pay exactly the same price and you don't even have to buy the thing that I've linked to. And if you go through that link, you can probably go and buy Aaron's books if you like, if you're interested in those. Um, what else? I am on social media. I'm on Facebook. is House D&D. &D. You can join the group to see what's going on there. There's usually still, still images, uh, a bit of a conversation going on, uh, files. So I upload files, things like that, and talk about what I'm doing. And it's so often back behind the scenes sort of stuff. Um, I'm also on Twitch TV, but I haven't been using it lately. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter, and that's, I think, probably the best places is Facebook and YouTube, really. And thank you to everybody who showed up and watched this long-ass video. I know it was a very, very long stream, and I, I do apologize for the two or so hours you've had to put up with me um, playing with clay. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, you can put that in the... In the chat box now before I leave otherwise down in the comments make a comment let me know did you like this would you do something like this yourself have you done something like this yourself yeah
give me your comments. Let me let me know what you think. It's always helpful. I will respond even though it takes me about a day or two to get to them. Um, just there's so more, many more comments coming through than there used to be. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Yeah, Aaron, definitely want to see the, uh, the, the foam, styrofoam buildings, even if, you, um, even if you think they aren't very good. Put them up on, uh, on Facebook. I want, to, I want to have a look. All right, we'll see you later.